96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. PediaSure, the number one brand recommended by pediatricians, now has 33% less sugar compared to previous formula and provides 25 vitamins and minerals and 7 grams of protein kids need for a healthy growth. It's a convenient meal or snack with a delicious kids-approved taste they'll love. PediaSure, nutrition to help kids grow. Ask your pediatrician about PediaSure today. Political review for uh, this wonderful Sunday, the 22nd day of August, year of our Lord, 2021. Uh, It's uh, it's an exciting day because this is the first day uh, that we're doing our show after the bell ring. And uh, and now having uh, had the bell ring, we are going to spend the next three or four weeks trying to determine. Uh, we're going to look into our crystal ball. We're going to cast the bones. We're going to read the tea leaves and the coffee grounds. And if necessary, we're going to cut open a cow and read its innards and you know dig around inside the goat blood and whatnot and try and figure out what the Bahamian people are going to do. Uh, the electorate is. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, an early election is uh, is an an unusual thing for the the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We we often hear people talk about it, but very rarely. Uh, I can't. I don't, I'll have to do some research to 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 be able to count the number uh, of snap elections uh, that have happened over the course of our uh, democratic history. Um, but uh, the, the, the fact is the most honorable Dr. Hubert uh, Minnis has rung the bell and given the date, September 16th. So that means that uh, all of the members of parliament that existed are now candidates. Uh, seeking to represent a constituency. There are no members of parliament. And uh, it won't be until the next sitting of the House that, uh, that we have that phenomenon again in, uh, in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. That means the fellow who is coming to you now or the lady who is coming to you now, uh, they ain't coming to you as, you as your MP. They come into you as the person who was your MP for the last four and a half years. And now it's time for Judgment Day. And uh, I think Judgment Day is going to be uh, a bloodbath for some folks uh, and, a, and a day of righteous vindication for others. And I, I, I'm very excited to, uh, to see what's going to happen in the next four weeks. Uh, today, uh we are blessed to have with us a uh a a i I will call her a social media influencer but more than that uh an astute and very connected uh talk show host someone who i I have uh, great expectations of uh, having watched uh, a few of her shows and interacted with some of her colleagues. I I think her name is going to to be uh, a big one uh, in in the coming months and years. Uh, And so I'm excited to get in on the ground floor and have a a, a no-holds-barred, knock-down, drag-out, 
uh, no lotion, no long talk politics with Ashley Murray, uh, the host of What You Think. Uh, and Ashley, welcome to the Political Review. Good afternoon, Quincy. Thank you for having me and thank you for your kind words. It's a pleasure to have you as my first ever interview. Um, so I'm very excited and grateful. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> this is your first time doing this? <laughs> it is my first time well, being interviewed about the show, yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes, I! Uh, okay, so uh, for those of you who are listening, we're also streaming live on uh, guardiantalkradio.com. Uh, so, uh, you know, pump, uh, put, 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 the, put the word on the street, let your people know uh, so that we can, uh, so that we can uh, have as many good questions on Q Public and surely Q Public as possible. Uh, so Ashley, here's the deal. I asked you to come on the show because I, I watched uh, a snippet of an interview you did with Glennis Connor Martin. And, and then uh, I, I was able to watch the first show you did with uh, young people commenting on politics in the Bahamas. And I wanted to talk to you about that last week, but you know, life, life happened. And in the interim, the prime minister went ahead and rang the bell, which uh, I think is exciting in the extreme. Uh, and so I wanna ask you first, uh, uh, I guess first question, do you think that young people, and I use that phrase very loosely, uh, are interested and maybe even excited about politics in the Bahamas uh, today? Well, um, simply put, my answer would be yes. Um, but to dive more into it is that's a part of the reason um, what drove me to take a shot at the show. I am tired of hearing older people say, oh, this generation, if they're not interested, um, you know, in getting involved, doing what's necessary to make the desired changes. But I feel like, you know, my generation, especially, we are interested. We, we want to be involved in the conversations. We want to be included. It's just not um, as welcoming or I feel presented in a way that intrigues us or makes us feel included. So when I was, um, I guess, strategizing the kind of show that I would want to put out on social media, because social media isn't really um, my thing, I took a shot at it because I saw a need. Um, I really set out to create um, a platform where a younger audience can engage and it can be a safe space for them to exchange their thoughts and you know feel comfortable regardless of their level of knowledge or their background. Um, so it, it, to answer your question, yes, I do feel like young people are engaged, they are ready, and um, we just we just want to know how how do we get involved and how do we stop ranting and actually move back into action and creating solutions. That is, uh, okay, you are suggesting that the, the young person who is paying attention to, uh, to po politics in the Bahamas at this moment is more interested in solutions than in ranting. That is, that is, funny, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I went to work uh, the morning the Prime Minister rang the bell, and when I drove home, I drove home through a sea of street signs for both PLP and FNM. 
And those street signs sprang up over the course of three, four hours and covered the entire island of New Providence. And I presume the, the other islands in, in, our, in our archipelago. Uh, do street signs vote? Of course not. But do they indicate how do you, okay, let me, let me rephrase. How do you as a, uh, uh, a party who is interested in, and by party I mean person, who's interested in kind of the, the, the election on the 16th, uh, how do you feel about these, I mean, this extravaganza of street signs? Let's just talk about it. Um, frankly, but um, I just hope they remove them after, you know, all of the sensationalism is over with. I understand the need to um, campaign, uh, but like you say, street, street signs don't vote. Like people have been, I guess, trying to pay attention to what matters uh, way before the sign was put there. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't really understand the purpose of it, I would say. And it's it's so timely that you ask that because I was driving down the street today um, on Tony Williams Highway, <laughs> and I was really just trying to figure out. Okay, I guess they have a good marketing team, but I really don't know the purpose of all of the street signs. Um, but it's timely, or even better, that we got to do this interview today. Uh, because last, I think probably about Thursday night, um, you know, Jason Brannan for Spectrum Politics, mm -hmm. uh, he hosted uh, a Spaces on Twitter and he invited me and other people and it really grew. Like we probably had over 100 people in on the talk. I said when, I, when I tuned in, it was 60. And, 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 oh no no it grew you you didn't come on time it grew we didn't yeah. we, we were so engaged we didn't get off i think until about 10 15 maybe yeah um but um the young voters that were on the call there was one in particular um he said that you know he is going to consciously abstain from voting because at this point, you just feel like it's just far too much confusion. Um, and he doesn't see, especially in it with everything that's going on, the difference his vote, you know, would make. So um, I think, you know, to your earlier question, young people are, you know, they're very alert and they, I feel, I feel are moving away from the sensationalism behind um, local politics. But did the, did the young man who's, or did, did the young man's assertion that he would consciously abstain uh, meet with the approval of the other people on the, in the space? Or did you all try to talk him around? Was, um, was, he, was Like I said, well, it was a safe space to just speak frankly, but, um, a lot of people actually, well, not a lot, a few people actually agreed with him because um, his point was that he doesn't feel like it's voting if you have to choose between the lesser of two evils, you know? And, I mean, to a certain extent, you could agree with him. You may call it risk management. But um, um, a lot of other persons, you know, said that they, they don't see um, the point in it. Um, and, you know, some other persons that say that they'll just try to pay attention to what the reasons are that their family is affiliated with certain parties to see if their views align with it. Um, but to be honest with you, like a, a few young persons, especially having done the interview that we released last week, have that mindset that um, in the Bahamas, voting doesn't make a difference. Every five years, it's just gonna be the same thing. Yeah, I, I found it uh, I found it interesting when I, when I was watching the show that uh, and I talked about this last week the words that the, that your guests used to describe politics in the Bahamas the ones that I wrote, wrote down were archaic uh, outdated 
and exhausting. Uh, and yet, the, the, the majority of, and when I say young people, I mean people, uh, I'm, I'm calling anyone under 40 young. Uh, young people that I've met are, to an extent, uh, engaged in some way in trying to figure out what is best for the country. Uh, and, and so to your young man and, and the people like him who, who feel like voting doesn't make a difference, I, 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 con I contrast that with the people on your show who you ask, who, who were very clear that they, they, they thought that voting absolutely did make a difference and was essential. And, and you being, uh, I guess we'll call it the arbiter of the show, uh, is my question to you is in your moving, your tooling and your backing and forthing, uh, where do you think the majority of people, let's, let's split it, let's, uh, let's say Gen Z folks, uh, so I guess I would, let's call that folks under 30, uh, and, and, maybe, um, and maybe the folks uh, before them, who, who let's say 30 to 40, where do you think people fall? Do you, do you think that they will vote or do you think that they won't? I feel, well, in, the circumstances are different, right? Because then it's a snap election. So, they may have really had intentions of voting, but I guess, given the circumstance, you know, they they won't be able to, um, for not I guess registering in time. Um, so then there's that, uh, but then the ones that I that are registered, I think they 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 may vote because. I think it's a sensitive time that really affected all age groups given COVID-19, you know, I feel everybody just feels the, the state of crisis. So now more than ever before, I think it's more pressing on the younger demographic, but, um, you know, because of the circumstances, I just can't say how much how many voters I feel may turn up. But the intention I feel is there. Hmm. And, and this, this next part, uh, this next set, set of questions is kind of, I guess, community service type questioning. Um, because one of your, um, one of your guests talked about, in, in response to the question about whether government policy uh, considers young people, um, it, it was pretty clear that it, de you know, it depends on the policy, so to speak. Uh, and that made me wonder, uh, what, what, it, what is it that the political parties need to say you can't do anything at this point. It was, the election is three weeks away. It's not, there's not much you can do in three weeks. But what do they need to say to win or to convince young people to vote for them? I feel um, that that's the precise problem, actually. Like, we don't want you guys to just say what needs to be said to make us comfortable to win our vote. Um, one of the um, interviewees for the show, she articulated it very well. We want to be able to see, okay, what is your agenda? What is the plan? And how do you intend to get there? I don't need you to have a perfect run. I don't expect that you wouldn't have any obstacles, but I too want to be you know, kept informed about certain things. I don't have to know everything, but I do want you to communicate what's going on. Um, so I don't feel like and that's probably why, you know, there's a lack of trust in, in, you know, these politicians now because they have just been doing that, making promises that they can't keep. 
you know. So I don't feel like that should be something considered. I feel like now is the time to actually say, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is why we think this plan is best, and this is how we intend to execute it. And um, I think try to be more inclusive with the people, you know, um, not, not to be as abrasive and, and shut us out, but to let us know what's going on. Um, I would like to um, conclude that the powers, you know, that, that may be, you know, have very deeply logical reasons for the things that they're doing and that they're just not doing it on a whim. Um, so I'd like to trust that, but I, I just feel like that needs to be felt. So I don't think it's a, it's a matter of saying what needs to be said to get a vote. I feel like whoever is able to really show that they can, they're the proper administrator for the job, will be able to be more successful with the upcoming elections. The, the question about the, like seeing a five-year plan, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, it, how, how, I mean, how much, I, I don't know, I'm not quite sure how to phrase this, but how, what is the format? Yeah, okay, let's go with that. What, what's the format that you think would work best in terms of trying to present these plan and, 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 and policy ideas in a way that, you know, Ashley and her colleagues would, would appreciate. How, I mean, how do they reach you? Um, and I feel like that's a part, again, um, of what I'm doing. I'm trying to make it more of an approachable area, not just for politics specifically. But um, I think the format doesn't have to be set in stone. It could be um, based on whatever the party's agenda is. And um, I definitely think that they probably too need to include more uh, younger people in their strategizing because I feel like they could be, they're missing out on a demographic because they're not inviting more younger people to the table until snap elections are called. Um, but I feel like uh, actually doing that, um, which is, Stating their five-year plans is definitely more effective than, you know, putting signs on the street. And so, yeah, it's definitely more effective, I feel. But, but what do they need to say? What are, what are the things that are important? Uh, it's knowing how to, knowing what, what avenue to use is critical, I think, yes. Um, and young people, I think, forget sometimes how much power they have um, because you're the ones who are going to be voting for the longer period of time. Uh, so if they, if, the, if they can secure your support uh, and keep it, then they, 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 you know, that's all to their benefit. So the question is, Yes, they need to know how to get to you. But my question is, you know, what do they what do they need to say? What what is it that young people need to hear to win? Okay. Thank I mean, you. I know it's not fair to ask you to speak for all young people, so <laughs> I, um, well, I can only share my views and, and try to combine it with some of the views that I've um, heard. Uh, but I feel like people just want to know that they have a vote, a, a, a leader that they can trust. The, the right man for the job, I don't think they believe and have to know everything. Um, but I think he, they trust him enough to know that he's making the right choice for the people at that time. Um, so, I mean, I hope that answers your question in, in some way, but uh, more specifically um, off cam and on cam, the most common concerns that, that I'm hearing for younger persons is 
a lack of education. Um, I feel like the education system could definitely be improved that in the chances of having opportunities. Um, that is one. Um, the other one would be better representation in politics. Um, I feel like certain groups of people may be marginalized uh, because they aren't being invited to the table to speak. So I hope that answers your question. You are being very cute. Um, so let's let's take off the uh, take off the gloves. Uh, let, let's let's talk. When you say certain groups of people are being marginalized, what do you mean? Oh wow! I shouldn't know. <laughs> um. Well, I'll put it like this: You have people from all walks of life um, in a given society, right? Their views have to be presented as well. Not so as to say that, you know, certain policies have to be made in their favor, but just so that it could be seen or viewed as they were considered. That is not something that I have personally said. I am just a medium um, and bringing a forefront, bringing to the forefront, um, like I said, some of the views that were shared with me. So representation doesn't only have to mean women. Yes. So. I'm sorry if I'm being too cute, but um, I think that's the most appropriate answer to give at this time. Okay. Uh, the, the hard, okay. Uh, since, since this is your, your maiden voyage, uh, Ashley Murray, and since I don't do gotcha questions, uh, we- I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't hear that part. It, um, the internet yeah. dropped a little bit. Sure, I said, since this is your maiden voyage, and since I don't do gotcha questions, uh, I am not going to press you any further on that. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, there's a, t part of the reason that I want to is because there's a conversation there that the country has to have, and that most people in the country aren't willing to address. So we, 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 will, we will put that on the shelf for uh, perhaps the next time. And, Thank you, uh, first interview. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the the questions. Uh, so here's here's what some of the other kids uh, and forgive me, young people said when asked what factors they consider in terms of who they're going to vote for. The first was vision. Then there was policies. Then, like I said, the five year plan. And then there was this, this, the word leadership kept coming up. And when young people say leadership, what do they mean? Hmm. When young people say leadership, what do they mean? Well, um, I think my words, when I think leadership, I mean the person that is stepped up to the plate and um, decided to have the responsibility to govern and to do that the most effective and efficient way for the people. Um, I feel that's my view. Um, I'm sure that other persons might have other views as to what leadership might mean to them. And when you consider in the context of young people and politics, particularly uh, governmental politics in the Bahamas, and you have an election coming up. How 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 are you how are you going to judge leadership? And I feel like that everything that we said earlier um, and. The, along with everything else that um, some of the other interviewees would have said as to, you know, wanting to hear the vision, wanting to see somebody that's more inclusive. Um, so I think those, those things are, are 
how I think young people are going to judge the leader. They're not going to only look at, you know, the faults. They're also going to look at, um, I guess, integrity um, and whether the choices that they made um, in times of difficulty, whether it was in the best interest. I think those are what they're looking for when they judge their leader. And, and in the next, uh, I've, I've reserved a couple of questions for the second hour. Um, and they're going to be a little, a little, uh, a little more pressurized uh, to sort of give you an idea. I, I'm, I'm going to eventually be bringing it out of the realm of uh, talking in abstracts and begin talking in terms of specifics, right? Uh, and here we have, uh, oh, so here we have a short break and uh, we're gonna take this break. And when we come back, more with Ashley Murray and uh, Maury, sorry. And I uh, am Kate Quincy Parker. We'll be back shortly. Jablas. Enjoy an elevated mobile experience with BTC giving you unlimited talk for the best conversations, unlimited data for all your online fun, and while overseas, for, for just $50, $50 per line. line, unlock unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming when you sign up for BTC Superfast Fiber Internet with speed starting at 100 megabits per second. Enjoy more great savings and value. Upgrade or sign up today. Visit any BTC store or btcbahamas.com. Conditions apply. Girl, Junior just show me Bala Boy in his phone. What you mean? He take picture of that good for nothing boy? Shh, you don't want Bala hair. You say that. You know she always say that's my good child. So what he doing in Junior phone? Oh, he there because the police looking for him. He on that wanted list. Wanted persons in your phone now? Yes, child. And when police want to find anybody quick, quick, after something happened, they can send pictures direct to your phone. Go to Google Play or App Store and search for Crack Crime Bahamas. Then pick install and we'll go straight to your phone. There is also a section on missing persons? Yes, girl. Everybody needs to get this app so police can tell us right away when these people go missing. Just like an alert system. Yes, it has numbers for Crime Stoppers Bahamas so you can call and nobody knows you. Call directly to Miami and give the information without giving your name or anything about you. I try the tennis boys talking about where they hide those guns. I walk quick, quick round the corner and call that number. Call Calls 328-8477 from Nassau or, or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Start your day the right way with Seven Seas. Start your day the right way. Trust in the timeless tradition of Seven Seas Cod Liver Oil. Seven Seas Cod Liver Oil is a rich, natural source of omega-3, giving you the essential nutrients needed to promote good health and help make sure you're looking and feeling your very best. Whether it's one a day, high strength, or traditional, with Seven Seas Cod Liver Oil, you start your day the right way. Start your day the right way with Seven Seas. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Political Review. My name is Kay Quincy Parker. I am uh, joined today by Ashley Moray, the host of What You Think, a new uh, and very, very fascinating uh, show on, uh, on the Bahamian social media platforms that uh, examines young people's uh, thinking and, uh, and the lives and interior worlds of Bahamian youth uh, tied to uh, all manner of things. Uh, of course, today we're talking about politics. And so that is, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we're asking about. Uh, Ms. Moray has uh, asserted that young people in the country are, quote unquote, uh, to an extent, excited, some of them, about politics. Um, 
And at the same time, there are some who are planning to consciously abstain from the vote on September 16th. Uh, so is, uh, is, I suppose, a question of degree. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's how long, yeah, it's, it's how many, uh, if you had to put percentages, if you had to, if you had to divide the numbers, right, um, the local, the local, uh, the, the traditional math says that there is, that the Bahamas has, uh, you know, there's a base of people who are FNM and a base of people who are PLP. And then there's, you know, that 20% in the middle, uh, right? So I, I've spoken to a professor, uh, a politics professor at UB is maybe outdated and that the base, the bases have shrunk uh, to maybe more like 30% rather than 40%. And that, that, that set in the middle that's not committed and not decided is uh, more or less made up of, of the younger, uh, younger voters, younger potential voters. Uh, firstly, do you agree with that, that uh, the basis have shrunk and that the, the number of unco you know, uncommitted or undecided, unaffiliated voters is larger and that it is made up of young, more young people? Okay, sorry, could you just repeat the question? I want to make sure um, I answer mm -hmm. after the actually asking. Yes. So first, do you agree? that the base, the base math is wrong. Um, remember now the tradition that 40% of the electorate is a strong PLP base, 40% of the electorate is a strong FNM base, and the election really is a contest with the 20% in the middle. And uh, UB professor uh, Shelby, uh, suggested when, when he was on the show a couple of months ago that that math has changed and that it's now the more it's now closer to 30 percent base uh, for the FNM and PLP with the competition being say 40 percent uncommitted and that uncommitted in the middle mostly being young people and I'm asking if you agree with that uh, well, uh, it would take more to definitely get accurate numbers, but I do agree that a larger um, percentage is for uncommitted young voters um, because more people, more people are actually engaged in um, paying attention to what's important to them, um, how certain policies affect them. Um, and I don't feel that... I could be wrong. I don't feel like my generation and the younger generations are just, you know, of that same mindset where, oh, we're a PLP family or we're an FNM family. I feel like they're actually trying to be more conscious of who's the right person for the job. So I definitely feel like it's, it's probably larger now. Okay. Uh, and so what then what are the unique things that are specific to young people that make them either less or more interested in politics now? What are the things that, that really affect them that are driving, in your view, this, uh, this new interest in politics? Uh, well, uh, one big one, especially during the pandemic, um, I know a lot of young persons, probably just because of the conversations that I've been privy to because of the show, but they want to see more of that 
you know, U.S. style. You have your leaders actually, you know, answering questions on their feet, you know, about what they think about certain policies or certain actions that they would have done in the past. So um, I don't feel like, you know, them not choosing to participate in debates or it's, it's a good thing. Um, I feel like had they done so, it would definitely do more to, like I said earlier, gain the trust of young voters. You know, just imagine what it would be like to see instead of actually having rallies, you know, two big political leaders just batting back and forth on their views on the spot. Uh, that definitely takes a level of skill that any voter would want to see their leader have. Um, so there's that. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't feel like people want to just hear the talks to get the votes. Um, they want to see the actual plan um, and yeah, I, I feel like those, those two things are, are really key. All right. So in preparation for the show today, uh, I, I wanted to look around and see what, um, what similar conversations have been like uh elsewhere right uh the european union uh council of education youth partnership last year talked about political participation which is considered to be any activity that shapes involves or affects the, sp the political sphere and it would be every opportunity in space where young people have influence on anything that affects their lives whether that's politics decisions, relationships, or active engagement of young people in their communities. And that, that's sort of a, a broad definition of youth political participation. And I wanted, to, I wanted to, to shift the conversation for the next few minutes to the question of, of young Bahamian youth and political participation. Uh, what, what is it that is either driving or preventing uh, Bahamian young people from participating in politics? I mean, well, this is nothing about it is changing. Uh, um, I'm sorry to keep reiterating some of the same things, but I do feel like it's the examples and answers overlap. You know, mm -hmm. debates have taken um, place in past throughout our history, but I feel like now in this state and time, especially you know with crisis after crisis, it's it's more important or more relevant now than ever to actually see you know your prime your potential prime minister and your MPs to see them engage in in in, in debates on what matters to them. So I think things like that, you know, when you compare our political um, atmosphere to, I guess, when the US is having their, um, you know, election season. And I really paid attention to this a lot too when I was trying to strategize, you know, why are persons in my demographic, even myself sometimes, if I'm being honest, more, um, interested or engaged or watching CNN when, you know, a lot of the things that they're saying about don't affect me. And, you know, I feel like it's because the way in, in which the material is presented to them, you know, when they're called out on a spot and they have to answer questions, you know, in front of a party of a body of people and, um, like I said, think on their toes, those persons, young and old, who may not know some of those things are now forced to go ahead and research, right? And all of that, I guess, helps them in their decision-making process. Now, um, apart from the, um, like, I, like I was saying, the debates, I, as well as some other young folks that I've been talking to, we tired of the whole construction voting. 
I feel like something should be done. I, I don't know the administration behind it. But I mean, why are we still using construction paper with Elmer's glue and a passport photo? Just to show our right to vote. I, I, something like that, I wouldn't say affects my political participation, but I feel like it's a sign as to what I was saying, like, where's the progressiveness, right? Like, so the fact that we've been doing that for years and that there's not been anything changing, like, you know, how am I going to know that where else are we going to progress? When, when, when is it coming? I hope that um, answers your question. Mm -hmm. So in, in another, uh, in forum, uh, the statement was made that young people engage when they, and this is again politically, when they feel concerned or outraged about a certain issue. They feel compelled to act on a certain thing or in order to influence and change something in their society or their wider environment. Uh, and their feelings are influenced by their values character or personality. Do you think that Bahamian young people fit that profile? I definitely would say I feel like we are more emotional than we do have more to say and feel a uh, need to speak up um, after the fact, after things have happened. Um, but back to my comment earlier on some of the conversation that we were having um, regarding whether to vote or not to vote, is that's the importance of it, right? You, I mean, you have a right to speak more when you actually decided for or against something. So, I mean, don't be reactive, try to be proactive. So, make certain choices and um, do certain things before the end result, the negative end result comes about, I would say. I want to, I want to press you a little bit here, Ashley. Um, it says the, the young people engage when they feel concerned or outraged about a certain issue. Um, what, what are some of the issues that concern young young Bahamians? And what are some of the things that you all feel outraged about? Um, I would say a lack of, I, I would just say a lack of integrity or transparency. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example for you. Um, hmm. I would encourage you not to worry about the goodness of the example and just <laughs> give the example, whatever comes to mind. Okay, well, what and about... Integrity, that's fine. If that's what you mean, that's what you mean. You know, well, I guess a lack of integrity and transparency. Um, yeah, I, I feel like administrations in the past um, and presently uh, have, like I said earlier, done more to be administrative than inclusive. And because we don't understand what's going on or um, the processes of what's happening, um, we feel like really like you, you feel I am not unaware or maybe I'm trying not to use the word stupid, <laughs> but that's, that's what I want to say. Um, you know, another example would be like, we don't really engage with these potential candidates anytime or MPs anytime before the election, but 
when the election comes around, you know, you just happen to hand me out certain goodies or certain pamphlets. I feel like that's an insult, really, to ask me then or to try and engage with me at the final hour. I want to quote a young politician, well, the young political activist in Scotland says that uh, I, I think young people are becoming more involved in politics online and through social media, and that this is a really positive step. I also think that a lot of young people are realizing, and this is the piece that I kind of wanted to talk about. I also think that a, a lot of young people are real change policy. They have to make a bold stand against the status quo. My question is a, sort of a multi-part question for you, right? Um, one of the possible reasons that people don't get involved in activism is because they are satisfied with the status quo. And given that the Bahamas has a relatively high standard of living, given that we are uh, prone to, prior to COVID-19 uh, uh, and the pandemic, hopping on a plane and going anywhere in the world we feel like going, as long as our wallet could support it. Uh, given that there are very few amenities that other people in the world have that you don't have here in the Bahamas. Uh, is it possible that our young people are just too satisfied with the status quo to be up in arms about any one particular policy? I mean, I feel like that could be a part of it, um, but there are also uh, parts of it that um, people just have a lack. There is a lack, I think, maybe of civic education. Some people don't know um, how to go about, you know, be, come, getting involved in activism. Some people don't know what the effects of activism is or, or you know, the, the necessary steps to take to de develop solutions. So and I, I agree. Uh, part of it is, you know, being comfort, but then there's also too, you know, when you educate your people and there's more exposure, there's more to want, there's more to fight for. So it is multifaceted, but yes, I do think that's, that could be a part of it. But if it's only a part, then are you suggesting that the, there is something else that is preventing young young Bahamians from engaging. I mean, I, you kind of hinted at, at a lack of education, um, but is there is is there more to it than that? I mean, it could be fair. You know, um, politics is not the most comfortable sphere to be in. Um, it's not always the most forgiving one. Um, so fair could be a part of it, uh, and, and just just how how do I like even if I were successful in rallying a group of young people, you could do that, and we could run all day. It's just a matter of like I said, what are the steps to take? I don't feel you know like there aren't any young people out there that don't want to um, be more active in their communities and their societies. It's just a matter of how and. Like I said, that comes back to education. Okay. So you asked the, the the guests on your show what the the what they thought of if they could sum up politics in the Bahamas in one word. Um, I would like to ask you what you think the top, say, five issues affecting young Bahamians in terms of politics? I think impatience, uh, a lack of information, and a lot of that is 
taken on personally. Um, probably immediate satisfaction. It's going to take time for us to, I guess, undo um, some of the wrongs or even time to just, you know, climb a hill in the positive direction. Um, you said five, that was three. Um, Let's go back to the to Give you some more. Part of I, I want to hear more about that. You kind of, sorry, Quincy. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Yeah, so, so I want to go back to impatience. I would, uh, I, I want to hear more about that. What does that mean? That means once you done wrong us, <laughs> once you didn't say the wrong thing, that's it. You got to go. Like, and and sometimes I feel not even just younger people, but just for human people as a whole, we could be kind of unforgiving um, and not look at the wider scheme of things. One misstep, and that's it. Um. So you all don't have a a a, a long a long rope then. You have a short rope to hang yourself. Pardon me? So there's a short rope that you have to hang yourself. Yes. Let's come in from a negative place. I think we just want to see the right choices made, you know, and, and we, we, I guess I would say, probably don't want to give more time for back, stepping back. So... That's why I feel like we have this attitude, like, you know, one mistake and we 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 go vote we go vote you out. Okay. Okay. Uh but how do how do we how do we fix fix, beat, uh, address? How 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 can we address that? That is a really tough question, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, okay. I'm still battling um, myself uh, when I, um, you know, because I, I try to like engage and, and inform myself on certain things, especially things that um, might affect me closely. And I try not to take it personally and to look at it, you know, as a, as a wider outlook as to, you know, what would, what would this mean for us as a people, as, as a country? So maybe if people were to think less selfishly and probably think more long-term, um, when certain mistakes, mistakes are made by uh, whichever administration, as opposed to um, just in the moment, in the now, maybe that would be a step in the right direction. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was your second one? Me? You said I didn't know you asked to, asked me to list a number. No, no. I'm saying you. Your first. Your first one was impatience. Your second one was. Um. I said impatience. Um. Immediate satisfaction, I think. Uh, the third one. What was the third one? That was you, you, you mean instant gratification? I think I think that's what I said. I can't remember the third one. The third one. What, what did you mean by the second one? I mean, um, it's going to look ugly before it looks pretty. And nobody likes to accept that fact. That, that just goes with everything. You just, it's going to take more time, you know, to build the country in the way that you'd like to see. It's, it's not going to happen the day after elections, right? I think you just probably need, well, we as a people, we just need to trust that, you know, and this is why it's important, I guess, to vote consciously and to really start to like 
look at the overall picture with the person that you're voting for instead of voting off of emotions and I guess not so much of your own personal interest, but we have to get to a point where we trust that the person that we chose to be in that seat, you know, has a view of everything and, you know, and that they are making the best possible choice at that time. Um, you know, I listen to T.D. Jakes um, from time to time, and one of his quotes is he said, you know, when we ask God for things, we expect God to give it to us right away. And then he says, that's not serving God. That's wanting God to serve you. And, you know, if we take that back into, you know, from this perspective, we have to do the same thing. We have to trust. I'm not calling our political leaders our gods, but we have to trust, you know, that or get to a point to where we trust that what they're doing is in our best interest. And that's not only on part of the people, that's also on part of the administration to do things, the things, like I said, you know, like more inclusion, um, try to be more transparent because those things go hand in hand. So you have a, a party that has governed for more than 30 years. If you come by administration and the, uh, and the, and the uh, Christie administration. Um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the other party has governed for, uh, a, sim a similar, well, not quite as long, um, if you add up all the uh, Ingram uh, administrations and now the Minnes administration. And in, uh, in, in the midst of that, you've had any number of third parties that have, uh, that have come and gone. And this, the, the one that has lasted the longest is, uh, is, I suppose technically you could say the BDM, since Cassius is running in this, in this election um, for the Bahamas Democratic Movement. But the, one, the third option that people have taken the most seriously is the um, the Democratic National Alliance. Uh, that party had a bit of an implosion recently. And I'm wondering whether or not that affected how young people have seen the election map. Did the DNA lose all hope or is there still hope for the DNA among young people? I, <laughs> it's such a deep breath. I didn't know you could hear me breathing. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say, I mean, I'm not, I only have one voice, right? So I could, I'm only trying, I could only be a medium for the things that I've heard as well as, um, try to share some of my personal views. Um, now, to be honest, I, in my conversations, I haven't heard a lot uh, about the DNA in terms of it being a voting choice. Um, even in, even, 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 yeah, yeah. With, Sorry, go ahead. even in, um, I don't know if you remember in the interview, somebody said it's just taking turns. Mm -hmm. I do remember, yeah. It, when, when I asked, um, yeah, I'm sorry, you're cutting out a bit. Um, but even in that frustration, 
they still seem to be deciding between the two, PLP and F and M. Um, so I wouldn't say that the, the DNA, the DNA uh, isn't necessarily a, a choice at this time. I definitely think more people are going to try to investigate more before they make their decision. But to the DNA, I don't think that means um, that they should, you know, stop or give up. I feel like, actually, I commend them for um, staying engaged, staying in the race, and um, you know, trying to develop a party that they feel is going to. Bring. Um, I I'm not sure if that answers your question, but um, I I don't know enough to say, but <laughs> it would change their votes or their choice as it relates to the DNA. Unfortunately. No, 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 nothing unfortunate about it. If your answer is the only answer you can give, I was just curious. Uh, so now let us <clears throat> let us ask some pointed questions before the internet, uh, uh, you know. Oh dear. Uh, so two more questions, and then, then I will uh, allow the, the the necessary to happen. <laughs> uh, the the first of the questions is: I saw a poll recently uh, run by Intel Key uh, that is a how people feel about uh, the two different leaders. Oh yeah. I did the poll. Yeah, I thought it was pretty, pretty well put together too. And so the I'm gonna see if I could pull it up right now while you're talking. Um, yeah. It, and my my recollection is that when it came to questions about uh, uh, PLP leader Philip Brave Davis, the 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 poll. Uh, was clear uh, in terms of how people felt about him. Uh, if, if I recall correctly, the, there was a significant number of people who uh, were afraid of him. Um, okay, so <laughs> um, you're talking about question 15. Please select your feeling if the below options are elected to become minister and they list Minutes, Brave Davis, Arinthia Komalafi. That right. question. And, and then there was uh, another question. Uh, sorry, not another question. Same question, but the um, the the result was was vis-a-vis uh, -vis Minas, and and uh, the the number, the largest number of respondents uh, seemed. Hopeful. Uh, am I am I recalling that correctly? I'm checking the page right now. Um, I'm not seeing. No, no I'm only seeing. Um, they're saying the PLP is up by eighty six percent. Yeah, that's that's an overall feeling. Yeah. Right. And anyway, but but in any event. My, my that was kind of my my question was not so much um, about I guess the details of the of the of the survey which you know it is what it is but <laughs> uh, but whether or not. Whether or not young people have, in your experience and in your in your listening, whether or not they've they have had a a reaction to uh, Doctor Minnis or Mister Davis. Uh, you had to make sure you close with that pointed question, huh? <laughs> um, okay. Well. Um, with Minnis, um, 
but uh, young people don't like how he has handled um, not just how he's handled the pandemic. Um, they felt uh, some of the choices that I've been, some of the comments that I've been hearing is that he has been, um, you know, very, he hasn't shown any compassion, um, you know, for the people. These aren't my views as, as yet, <laughs> um, that he hasn't shown any um, compassion um, and that in some cases he could have been engaging with reporters. And then um, on the other hand, there is the people that like that, that likes that he takes charge and he says um, things um, that, he, that he handles the interviews the way he does. Um, they, they, they commend him for that because they feel as though it's his way of taking control um, and that he's able to compartmentalize and you know, in spite of what everybody else thinks, that he's able to do what he has to do. Now, my view on Menace, he had a hard run. Um, he, he has had a lot to deal with back to back. Uh, however, having a lot to deal with, unfortunately, I, just, I don't feel um, makes it okay to show less compassion. That does not mean that, you know, I don't like him as a leader. And I'm not being cute, as you may say, I'm, I'm being as honest as I can. Um, but for the other side, um, some of the comments that I've been hearing in my circles about Brave are that they are tired of menace, so they will vote for brave. They don't care who the candidate is for the PLP. They'll just vote in that favor so he could be prime minister. And then there are also comments of, um, I would say, maybe his previous involvement with certain um, headlines that are still a concern. And I thought this was interesting. It was actually would just want to hear his take on it, just to hear what he has to say, um, I guess, as a means of gaining their trust or getting it from the horse's mouth so that um, they feel like they know a bit more who they're voting for. Um, more specifically, I challenged that person. And, you know, I was like, well, you know, have you read the headlines? Or do, you, do you know the stories or whatever it is that they're <laughs> alluding to? Um, and I said, yes. And he never answers the question. He just, you know, evades it. And, you know, I guess the lack of confronting the elephant in the room um, has potential voters afraid and reluctant. So um, me personally, um, I say, you know, feelings aside, just vote for who you feel is the best person for the job. <laughs> <laughs> I have to smile because I, I can imagine, um, like you would say, I'm being very politically correct or I'm trying not to hang myself. <laughs> The, uh, that's okay. There is, uh, there is absolutely no need for anyone to hang themselves on, uh, on this show. Uh, the, the beauty of a show like this is you don't hang yourself here, you hang yourself elsewhere. And then we ask you about it. So you're fine. Uh, but I, I, I just, I want to give, uh, give you one, I just say, to the political directorate from the, uh, the young people uh, who are looking forward to voting in the next three weeks, four weeks. Uh, if you have words for them, what are those words? I just, I would say, come to us as, you know, a part of the people 
um, that you're serving, you know, don't treat me as a person because you want my vote. And that's the end of it. The same humanity um, that you could approach me with before the election and the same way you would try to include me before, try to keep that ongoing throughout your administration. Just make a deliberate conscience, conscious effort to make your presence felt and you know, you would you win the people that way, not by just saying what needs to be said to get the votes and then disappearing for until you know elections get called again. Well, there you go. And with that, we will uh, allow the uh, wonderful Ashley Murray to take uh, take her leave. Uh, Let's take a let's take a little break, uh, Kermit. Uh, and when we come back, uh, we will uh, have one last look uh, at the uh, the constituents, uh, constituencies, and the representatives on the, the red team and on the, and uh, and then uh, I guess it's off to the races after that. Uh, Ashley, thank you very much for your time and energy, and uh, we'll be paying attention, eh? Take care. delivery service gives everyone in the family islands a chance to shop a variety of club products and prices right from home simply call or whatsapp your order to 242-677-7266 or email order at amlfoods.com a friendly customer service representative is waiting to pick pack and deliver your order to the mailboat of your choice the options are truly endless and with membership you save even more so order today and let cost right pick pack right to you Girl, Junior just showed me Bella Boy in his phone. What you mean? He take picture of that good for nothing boy? Shh, you don't want Bella here. You say that. You know she always say that's my good child. So what he doing in Junior phone? Oh, he there because the police looking for him. He on that wanted list. Wanted persons in your phone now? Yes, child. And when police want to find anybody quick, quick, after something happened, they can send pictures direct to your phone. Go to Google Play or App Store and search for Crack Crime Bahamas. Then pick install and we'll go straight to your phone. There is also a section on missing persons. Yes, girl, everybody needs to get this app so police can tell us right away when these people go missing. Just like an alert system. Yes, it has numbers for Crime Stoppers Bahamas so you can call and nobody knows you. Call directly to Miami and give the information without giving your name or anything about you. I tried the other day and when I hear Junior and his boys talking about where they hide those guns, I walk quick, quick round the corner and call that number. Call 8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Enjoy. Enjoy an elevated mobile experience with BTC giving you unlimited talk for the best conversations, unlimited data for all your online fun, and unlimited roaming to stay connected while overseas. For, for just $50, $50 per line. line, unlock unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming when you sign up for BTC Superfast Fiber Internet with speed starting at 100 megabits per second. Enjoy more great savings and value. Upgrade or sign up today. Visit any BTC store or btcbahamas.com. Conditions apply. The novel coronavirus disease, now called COVID-19, is a new strain of coronavirus that has not infected humans before. Symptoms include cough, fever, sore throat, breathing problems, and shortness of breath. After a person has been exposed to COVID-19, they're 14 days later. Severe cases can lead to pneumonia, severe respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, or even death. The virus is transmitted after being in close contact with an infected person. To prevent the spread of a respiratory illness like COVID-19, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. Rinse, then dry. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth unnecessarily. 
especially if your hands are not washed. Cover your mouth and nose with your inner elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Avoid close contact with persons who are infected or have symptoms such as coughing or sneezing. Clean and disinfect surfaces at home and at work. There are no medications to treat the coronavirus. Practice preventative measures to ensure that you and your family are safe. This message brought to you by Bahamas Ministry of Health in conjunction with Guardian Radio. Hey, I'm Tate. And I'm Don. We talk about current events, issues of national importance, and basically anything interesting. Me, that who born in the 60s, right? From, from my ear, the people talk and they sound like us. They used to be Bahamian. Thing, and you're suggesting that if you don't have family, family rooted in a family <laughs> island, then you're not really Bahamian. Still your weekly dose of something different. Right, 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 right. And basically... Every five years, we, we sell a different dream. Um, we're five years away from a better country. The Eye Opener, Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., only on Guardian Radio 96.9. Talking about a revolution, now this is not a game. A bold new era calls for a new mindset, fresh ideas, and a renewed commitment to innovation. Join us for University Drive and the Path to Progress. Enter the conversations about higher learning. Follow the shapers and drivers of change. We're shining a light on matters that impact the world. Travel the road of progress with us. University Drive, a University of the Bahamas talk show airing on Saturdays at 11 a.m. right here on Guardian Talk Radio 96.9 FM. Join us. Are you interested in the Bohemian economy? How about tips to improve your financial literacy? Tune into Guardian Radio's newest financial podcast series, C File Talks. The podcast will provide listeners with their weekly dose of economic issues and solutions and the keys to financial freedom. C File Talks will be hosted by an array of finance experts here to give honest and beneficial advice. You won't want to miss the C File Talks podcast series Monday evenings from 6 30 to 7 p.m. here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Track and Field is the queen of the Olympic Games. In its seventh season, Track World with Alpheus Phillipson, the only radio show in the Bahamas and one of the few in the world dedicated to our beloved sport, continues to promote the athletes, coaches, officials, leadership, and the partners who make a difference in our sport. We encourage you to tune in to Track World on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM each Tuesday evening on cable channel 969 on Guardian Radio's website www.guardiantalkradio.com or streaming live on Facebook at 6.30 and be dazzled. Concerned about your health? Have a health question that you're curious about? Ask the doctor. The doctor is in with me, Dr. Denothra Archer Cartwright. We're talking health, wellness, and all things that pertain to the Bahamas Society and the health of the nation. Tune in Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. The doctor is in on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Hi, I'm Amanda Colson, the director of the National Art Gallery of the Bahamas, the show in which we speak about visual culture and creative community. When artists look at a blank canvas, what do they see? Not an empty void without meaning, but a horizon, infinite possibility, on which they can bring their dreams and ideas to fruition. On the blank canvas, we have lively discussions about art and culture in all its aspects, with creative thinkers and cultural leaders from the community. Learn about your visual culture and creative community. Tune in and listen to The Blank Canvas on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 on Guardian Radio 96.9. This is your host, Valentino Brown, Inside the Inner City. Join us as we continue to tell our stories, challenges, talk about the history, and share our hopes and dreams. Tune into Inside the Inner City on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. And remember, the place in which I fit will not exist until I make it. The novel coronavirus disease, now called COVID-19, is a new strain of coronavirus that has not infected humans before. Symptoms include cough, fever, sore throat, breathing problems, and shortness of breath. After a person has been exposed to COVID-19, symptoms can appear between 2 to 14 days later. Severe cases can lead to pneumonia, severe respiratory syndrome, kidney failure, or even death. The virus is transmitted after being in close contact with an infected person. To prevent the spread of a respiratory illness like COVID-19, 
Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. Rinse, then dry. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth unnecessarily, especially if your hands are not washed. Cover your mouth and nose with your inner elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Avoid close contact with persons who are infected or have symptoms such as coughing or sneezing. Clean and disinfect surfaces at home and at work. There is coronavirus. Practice preventative measures to ensure that you and your family are safe. This message brought to you by Bahamas Ministry of Health in conjunction with Guardian Radio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Political Review. Uh, my name is is Kay Quincy Parker. It is my distinct pleasure to uh, host the show and to welcome you back. Uh, we had a very, uh, I thought, fun and interesting conversation with uh, the uh, the host of uh, What You Think. Uh, her name is Ashley Murray, and uh, I believe that it's. Uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting forum uh, going forward. Uh, you'll see some, some really great interviews that she did. Uh, she's interviewed uh, Glennis Hannah Martin. She's interviewed uh, Loretta Butler Turner. She's interviewed Maxine Seymour and, uh, and some other folks as well. And, uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a great show. And I, I encourage you to go find it and, and check it out. Uh, now, as uh, as we mentioned, the uh, hmm, the the joy of politics from the quote unquote sideline is the uh, the sense that you can make a call. Right, and so that you can try to figure out what people are going to do. And one of the, the more interesting uh, sort of left field seeming calls that was made recently was the choice by the prime minister, excuse me a moment. was the choice by the prime minister to call a snap election, which kind of, you know, was in the wind and folks were both surprised and not surprised. And, uh, and so today, uh, after having talked with the, um, a young person whom I believe is is quite capable of standing in as a as a stand-in for the young the youth vote. Uh, I am going to give myself and my listeners a starting place for the 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 math that we're all going to be doing over the next three or four weeks. To begin with, why did the prime minister call the election now? My view is that he uh, and his advisors clearly believe that we are at a red place vis-a-vis the economy is a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of life bubbling in the economy. There's some people, you know, getting jobs. There's some investment happening, some new business expansion, and and so the economy is starting to bubble just uh, in, in in a good way. And we've got a uh, we've got as much of a handle on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic 
uh, as can be expected with the, 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 the limited resources that we have. And I believe the PM, PM's calculus is, let's go now before things take a turn for the worse. And he probably is thinking that if he waited until next May, the likelihood of things getting worse in terms of the COVID variant, the COVID Delta variant, and the pressure that's on the public health system is more than likely going to explode within the next six months. And, and so he's probably thinking, have the election now before that happens and deal with that with a new mandate. And, uh, and in terms of, I guess, election calculus, it, it's not a, it's not a bad strategy. But what it means is that some folks who uh, who were running are, are now a little more vulnerable than they would have been. And I think the prime minister's calculus is that about a dozen seats, given that he's got a 35 to four majority and still retain the government. So I think that he's expecting to lose, like I say, about a dozen seats and, and still hold on. And so today, I'm going to go through uh, the FNM's uh, list and see if we can identify them dozen uh, who, who might be gone. Uh, and we, we only have 20, less than 20 minutes to do it. So, you know, it's going to be fun. We'll have a good time. And who knows, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong about a lot. So I'm probably wrong about this too. Travis Robinson in Bain and Grandstown. Uh, he is running against uh, Wade Watson. Um, but it almost doesn't matter who he's running against. <sighs> Although Travis is kind of the darling of Bain and Grandstown. So I'm going to say uh, he, 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 he'll eke out a victory. Uh, Bamboo Town. Call, call, her, call her, you know that we don't do phone calls generally. So make it good. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. We, we generally don't do phone calls on the political review. So as a, as a courtesy, because the, the PM ring the bell, I'll take this call. But call it, that'll be good. Welcome to the political review. Oh, all right, great. Uh, so you can call back. Uh, so Bamboo Town, Randwood Wells. Uh, the minister is, uh, I think, uh, not because of his, his, who he's running against, but because of the fact that he, uh, he is the man on whom the bullseye is now painted for COVID-19 and uh, he, he has put his foot in his mouth a few times over the course of the of the last four and a half years. So even though I think he's a pretty strong, a pretty strong candidate, I'm going to say there's a question mark over Bamboo Town. Uh, Carmichael. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure DPM is 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 going to win. Carmichael, uh, Keith Bell is not not going to do it, and Arinthia Komalafi is. Um, I think she is. She. I actually think she'll keep her deposit. Um, but I don't think she's going to. I don't think she's going to win the seat, and I don't. She's really going to influence the 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 vote. Uh, significantly enough to be a, a danger to Bannister retaining that seat. Um, Felicia Knowles in Cat Island, Rumkey in San Salvador. Uh, 
uh, I'll put a question mark there. It, it, I know Felicia and emotionally, uh, just as, a, as, as I say emotionally, I would probably want her to win, uh, but I I can't. It's it's it, it's tough to see her beating beating Brave. Uh, Senneville, Courtney, Cooley Billy, Cooley Billy, uh, uh, or Cooley Bailey. Uh, Courtney, you'll have to help me with pronunciation there. I know Reese is running independently, I, I believe, um, which I think is going to be a problem for Courtney. Um, Joe Campbell is, he's got some real, real ground game people working for him. So uh, I'm going to say Santaville. I'm going to put Centerville uh, uh, in that list. Uh, I'm going to put a question mark there. Um, where are we now? Van Dier Stewart in Central Abaco. <sighs> yeah, she gone. Uh, young Mr. Aubrey did not do her any favors. Um, you know, my understanding is that he, he, uh, really didn't do much once he was elected. So, uh, given that and how angry people are over Dorian, I, I can't see how Miss Stewart, uh, will come through that. Um, but we'll see. we'll see. Central and South Eleuthera. Uh, Hank Johnson, as they call him. <laughs> uh, I think Hank is going to be fine. Um, East Grand Bahama. That's Crazy Thompson. Uh, if it had been Peter, uh, I would say that he wouldn't have a problem. Uh, Quasi. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that he has the same, uh, the same pull in the area. If he has, if he has Peter's support, then I'm, then I guess he'll be fine. Elizabeth, uh, I don't believe the hype. I think Duane is going to win Elizabeth. Uh, Anglerston, uh, I don't think uh, even Mr. Presetti believes he's going to win that. Uh, Fort Charlotte, uh, young Mr. Archer is putting in some work. Uh, he's introducing himself to people and helping uh, helping people get to know him and, and all these wonderful things, but. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Alfred says is going to win that seat. Uh, Fox Hill. Ah, yes. John Pinder versus Fred Mitchell. And like John said, if he had enough time, I think he could have made a credible case. Um, but he was one of the last. I think that's a, a disadvantage, and I don't know if you'll be able to, to overcome it. Uh, so I'll put a question mark there. But honestly, I, I don't think I don't think John's going to be able to climb out of that hole. Uh, Freetown. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't think Wayne is going to win. I think uh, Iago is going to hold that pretty easily. Garden Hills. Mr. Greenslade, I believe, is gone. Uh, he ran for the DNA last time and uh, not sure that he is uh, baptized 
<laughs> so to speak. Uh, Golden Gates. Um, I don't know about Mike, so put a question mark there. Golden Isles. I actually think um, Mr. Brown is going to win Golden Isles because I think all the FNMs who voted for Vaughn Miller and are angry that he switched sides are going to punish him by voting for Mr. Brown. I put a question mark that's going to and hold that seat. Uh, Long Island, I think Adrian is safe in Long Island. Uh, let's see, Ken Smith had to pull out of uh, Mangrove Key in South Andros. Uh, so we'll put a question mark over that. Marathon. Mr. Ferreira, uh, I think that he is, if he's playing his cards right in the constituency, the fact is, ain't nobody worried about the dump anymore. And I think that's incredible work. And for that alone, I think he, uh, he, he, he will probably, if he plays his cards right, hold his seat. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave uh, leave Romy there, Marco City. Um, I think Mike is fine. Uh, my Cal, yeah, I don't I don't think um, I think we'll, might have some trouble there in my Cal. She didn't, she did not cover herself with glory. So, yeah, yeah she, she might be one of a dozen. So I'm, I'm, I'm counting her as gone. Mount Mariah. Boy. Um, yeah, Marvin, Marvin is all right, I think. I'm gonna put a question mark there, but I think he I think he'll be fine. Nassau Village. Nicole Martin. Nicole may have a challenge given her union record. And how angry some of the people in Nassau Village are at Minas. So I'm not sure she can, I'm not sure she can break through there, but I'll put a question mark for now. Uh, North Abaco. Uh, this one is going to go counterintuitive uh, because people are angry at Minas and the FNM uh, for, for Dorian. But I think that uh, I think that Darren Hanfield is going to hold the seat. Um, North Andrus, I think uh, Carlton Bolag is going to hold that seat. I think Ricky Mackey is going to hold that. Pine Ridge. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I. I, I, I know Mr. Boodle has a good reputation, but I think Pine Ridge is gone. Pine Wood. I think Ruben is probably going to be all right. Sea Breeze. I know Maxine uh, has a tough, tough road to hoe uh, up against Leslie. 
I'll put a question mark there, but I'm pretty sure she'll be fine, but it depends. I'm hearing things that are problematic for the FNM. Uh, so they need to they need to get out the vote. Jeff Lloyd in South Beach. Again, I think Jeff will be fine. Frankie Campbell. Southern Shores. Question mark. <laughs> St. Anne's. Uh, I'm sure Mr. White will be okay. St. Barnabas. Yeah, so that's going to be a rough one. Um, Shannon don't work really hard, but the PLP loves Michael, Michael Halkidas. I'm going to have to put a question mark there just because you know, it's a PLP area, but I think Shannon Dawn worked it. I think he really worked it hard. Tall Pines. Uh, we'll see. We'll have to see how Dawn is doing. I don't know. Exumas and Ragged Island. Jenny is a good candidate, but I don't know if she can. I don't think she could be. Uh, I don't think she could be Chester. Only because, again, the level of anger at Minnis. There's, there's going to be a lot of that. You know, the PLP is familiar with that. You know, they lost a lot of good MPs because people were angry at Christie. And this time it's it's Minnis who's sitting in the chair. And even though I think personally, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and actually give a personal opinion here. I think uh, Dr. Minnis did well as as a prime minister handling the 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 three or four serious challenges that faced his administration. Um, but I think he is probably ready to pay the price for, for the people's anger. Uh, I don't think Pakeja can hold off Obi and West End, uh, but I do think that uh, Ellsworth will be fine in Yamacro. So, first blush. PLP. Exuma has gone to the PLP. Pine Ridge has gone to the PLP. Three. Michael is four. Garden Hills is five. Fort Charlotte is six. Angliston is seven. Central Optical is eight. So that's eight that I think are pretty clearly uh, the PLP is going to pick up. And then there are some question marks. Those question marks include uh, Bamboo Town, Centerville, Golden Gates and Golden Isles, Fox Hill. I mean, honestly, Fox Hill is probably gone to the PLP as well. And Southern Shores and St. Barnabas are all question marks. And Seabreeze. So next week we'll, uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have someone on who can uh, help us understand how, uh, how I, uh, either the PLP or the FNM intend to win the election. And uh, uh, until then, I encourage every Bahamian to make sure that you, you know where you're supposed to vote, make sure that you've studied the available evidence that will allow you to make a choice that you could live with and know that the, uh, the people of future generations are, <laughs> are counting on you to make the right decision on September 16th. 
whatever that right decision is for you. As long as you can live, live, live with it and, and, and be in good conscience, then it was the right thing for you to do. Uh, until next week then, God bless. Thank you for riding along with us today. We appreciate your time and your thought and your energy. Uh, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Yeah.